Hey, Bobby here with Coder Foundry. And one of the big news recently is that Heroku ended their free plan for hosting. And at Coder Foundry here, that's what we're using to deploy student projects to. So there's a couple of choices that we got to make. We could continue to pay for Heroku. And it's looking like um, for us, a full stack application with a database and a service, that's going to be like $16 a month per app. And so that's kind of expensive for students. So in a railway, now railway allows us to deploy full stack applications that is mostly free. And I will talk about what mostly free means at the end of this video, but in general, you get $5 a credit. And uh, if you go to those five credits, you start paying. The question is, can you get your app and only run it for free? And that's going to depend upon usage. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But let's talk about how we can set this up. Now, a couple of things I need you to understand is if you're still deploying a portfolio site, like a static HTML and maybe some JavaScript, Netlify is probably still the best option for free for that. But if you have to implement a full stack application with a database, Netlify and a lot of these other hosts won't work. And so Railway allows us to deploy server-side code, a database, a full stack application for mostly free, all right? Especially for .NET applications. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today is how do I deploy an ASP.NET .NET 6 application to Railway and get it to work. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is show you kind of what we're going to do here. I'm gonna go and I've already logged in here. I'm gonna to go to my dashboard here and I'm gonna scroll up to my personal account. Now you probably won't have a team account. I have a Coder Foundry team account here, but your personal account will look a lot like this. And the first thing it's gonna ask you to do is to create a new project. Now a new project is gonna contain um, the database and our web service. So what we do is just click new and we can say deploy from a GitHub repo automatically if we want. The first thing I'm going to do is to deploy my database first. So I'm going to hit that and that's going to create a Postgres instance for us. So that's kind of cool. So now we can look at the settings here by clicking on this and we can look at the settings and I'm going to show you that a couple of, um, variables that are created here already for us. So database URL is the one that we're going to use during our code at runtime to be able to figure out how to connect to this. Now, inside of Coder Foundry, when we run our .NET 6 class, we talk about how to build this code. I'm not going to go into it in this, um, in this video, but I am going to give you some snippets that we use inside that project in case you're not with Coder Foundry and you want to see how you could make this work inside your .NET 6 app, I'll give you the snippet for the two classes that we use to uncover this database URL. So you can look in the comments here and we'll, we'll give you those links to those. All right. So I've got, um, this database up and you can notice here, I don't have any, and it's, I don't have any tables here. So I can look at the database and there's no tables here. So that's okay. So our code is going to generate these tables. Um, we're going to use entity framework migrations to migrate our database into here. Now, the next thing I need to add is my actual web service. And so I am going to pull this directly from a GitHub repo. And that's what you need to do too. So you need to have a GitHub account with your .NET application deployed in there. And so I'm going to pick the one that I'm going to use here. I'm going to use this CF address book here. If you want to learn exactly how to build this, our self-paced course at learn.coderfriend shows us how we built this app. But we're just going to focus on the deploying it at this point. All right, now the first time you do this, it's going to go ahead and initiate a deploy. Now, this is going to break. And this is where I'm going to give you the information you need to make this work, all right? There's a couple of things that we have to change to make this work. So after this is deployed, I'll show you the changes and then we'll get it working here. All right, so I'm gonna go into Visual Studio here and I'm gonna pull up my Solution Explorer here. And this is this project that we've been working on here, Contact Pro. And normally when you create a .NET application, it'll create a folder structure that has the solution in a root folder. And then a subfolder under that will be called CF address book. So your C sharp 
project will be in a subfolder below this um, solution value. So you need to convert this project to be all in one folder. Now, if you do file new project like this, I'm going to say file new project. If I went to new project here and I pick model view controller here next, um, you can say place solution and project in the same directory. You do want to check this, okay, because this will create it correctly for you. Um, by default, sometimes this is unchecked. And if it's unchecked, um, it'll create a subfolder in there, and that's not going to work. But let's say that you've already kind of um, built this out. What do you do? All right. So let's look at this on disk here. So I'm going to go um, and view this in File Explorer here. I'm on Windows. Pull this over here and make this maximized here. All right. And you can see here, um, I've got my solution file and my CS proj all in the same folder. And then the WW root, the views, the services, projects, models, everything is in the same folder and you need to do this. Now, if you are currently looking at a project and it has subfolders, what do you do? You copy all the files out of the subfolder and stick it in here. And then what you need to edit the solution file in something like notepad. I'm going to edit this right here to show you kind of what you need to do. And you'll see a path here to the subfolder right here for the CS Prod. You want to delete that out. And so that this is just referenced like it's in the same folder. So no pathing or no slashes in front of this. All right. If you do that, that's the first step to getting this to work. All right. So Make sure that everything is in the same folder, the solution and the CS project and all of the folders in there and you should be good to go. All right, so let's look at one other. Let's go back and look at railway here to see after it's built here. And we click on these things here and I've got some, you can see it came from main here and we'll look at the deploy settings here. And the first thing that's going to happen here, more, more than likely, is you're going to see this error right here um, where it says process terminate, couldn't find a valid ICU package. Now, what we're doing is we're pushing this to a Linux environment. And that's the container that Railway is using to build it out. And the container doesn't use or have an ICU package in it. So what we need to do is set our culture data to invariant. And so what we're going to have to do is modify our code, being mainly our project file, to do that. And then this will build. All right. So let's do that and watch what happens. So I'm going to pull back over here, Visual Studio here, and I'm going to pull this down. And I'm going to edit this project file here. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to click Edit Project File. And in here, in the Property group, I need to put in some code. So I'm going to type that in right here at the bottom of the property group. And this is called invariant globalization. And then it has a true in between the XML nodes here. So I need to make sure that this is set to true. And then invariant globalization is the property we're using here in the property group. And that will overcome that issue. Right? So we're going to save this. And then I'm going to commit this. Something like that. Commit. And then I'm going to push this code here. And we'll show you what happens here when we push it. So now our deployment's crashed, and then notice here my push happened to get, and then it started deploying it again, which is kind of cool. And we can watch um, this in our logs here to see kind of what's going on here. So you can see right away that um, it's using their built-in Nix packs, and um, it's using the .NET Restore things to build this out. So it's kind of neat. So this is all built into Railway. It's still going through the build. 
Okay, now that that's deployed out there, you can see now this is actually running. Kind of neat. Um, it also, look at this, it found my Postgres SQL server or SQL and it ran my migrations automatically. And you're probably thinking, how in the world did it do that? But we can go look at this. Now we look at the table and I do have my tables out there, my categories, category contact, contacts, and all of my um, identity options out there as well as the migrations thing. So that's pretty cool. And you're probably thinking, how did we do that? Well, first, in, um, let's, we'll talk about it in a second, but let's look in making sure that we can actually see this app run. So if you notice here that um, when I look at this deployment, it says success, but I have no way to get to it. And that's because even though this is deployed, it's not available for the world to see. So let's look into a couple of changes that we got to make to make it available. So I'm also going to look in these deployed logs here and you're going to see right here, somewhere down the bottom here that this is listening on colon 3000. So port 3000 is what this is listening on. And we need to expose that port to railway. So it now knows how to serve our app up. So I'm going to go to my variables here. I'm creating a new variable and I'm going to call it port. 3000 and click add and what was that's going to do is cause another redeploy when it does it all right and it'll redeploy the service so we can look at the deployments here and you can see it's going through the build process still using the same code it actually went to main to see if there's any changes it still has the same code all right now the other setting while this is building that we have to do is we come over here and we have to generate a domain. Okay. So we need a domain. So this is also published to the internet or the service is public to the internet. So you can use custom domains built on your own domain. If you want to, I'm not going to cover that. I'm just going to say generate here. And, um, you can edit these however you want. So I'm going to call this just see if, Call it Contact Pro. Okay. Now these domains obviously are universally across all of railway, so you may have to type in a few to get the ones you want. But um, I just you can type in whatever you want there, and then we can go back to our deployment here. Um, you can always go in here and look at. The deploy logs and as well and you can watch what's going on here we'll also update here on this tab here when it's up and running when it's finished okay and once I've finished deploying here now I want you to note if you're making changes to any of these settings and variables during the build process you'll just have to re-kick the deploy off um, but once you've not made any changes during the deploy process and you can come up here and just click on your active and then there is your dotnet application kind of cool so if we even if we log in um, everything is working for the database so that's how we um, get this going. Now, the thing that you may be asking yourself is how did we, how are these two um, communicating? Um, so if I go back over here and look at the variables here, we notice that there's this database URL. Well, if they're in the same project and these are called projects, um, this application, this code base can see these URL or these variables over here. And we wrote some code um, during the course to build this out is how do you access variables? And I'm going to show you that code, but I'm also going to give it to you. And so this is a class that we wrote, a helper class. And you can see here, we're going to the environment and getting that database URL. Now, what you need to understand is this is um, pretty universal from across platforms. So whether you're on Heroku or railway this code actually work and works really well all right so we also looked at 
the Postgres string in database URL and wrote some code to, to split it up so that we could create a connection string that Entity Framework could use. So that's the two things in this class uh, that we did. The other thing that we've that I'm going to give you is this also this data helper here. And um, this data helper here runs and um, it runs at when the startup and it does a migration. And that's how we got the database to Postgres without any code. And what it does is basically checks to see if there's any changes. And if it, there are, it updates the database. If they're not, it doesn't do anything. So that's the two pieces that I'll provide to you in a GitHub gist. Um, but it's a pretty simple way to get your app working. Now let's talk about pricing a little bit. And so you can see up here in the, I'm on the starter plan here and the starter plan is free for 500 hours. Okay. But if you're doing the math, this app will be available about 21 days. It's not going to be up, um, 24 seven, um, because you'll run out of hours. Typically you need about 750 hours, um, for a whole month. And you're asking, well, well, that's not free. I'm like, it's technically not free. Now, if you go to, and I'm going to go over here and look at my account settings here, I'll get a billing. You can unlock the developer plan. And if you unlock the developer plan by adding in a credit card, um, then the countdown on the hours switches over to actual usage. And so CPU usage and memory usage um, is what it's looking at to to figure out if that's the price or not. Now we haven't tested this for a full month, but it looks like $5 will allow um, a student level app to run, meaning that it's probably not accessed every day. It doesn't have, it's not taking up much memory or CPU usage during the day. And you can actually look at your usage here and you can see kind of what it's using. Um, so I've got several of these in here and this is my starter plan here that we just used. And so it's estimating to spend about a dollar 38. Now you're going to have to, um, test this out, but this is superior over Heroku as far as the pricing goes, because Heroku is going to charge you $16 for a, a Postgres SQL and a web service running. And it's kind of a flat fee and it's not dependent upon CPU and usage, whereas railway is. So we're going to test this for 30 days and I may have a follow up video to give you more concrete pricing. But right now this looks like the best way to get an app out. That's mostly free. Like I said, it's not a hundred percent free. It's mostly free and you are going to have to unlock this developer plan in order for that to take place. Now you can use prepaid credits. You got to give them money up front and that may not be an option for a lot of them. So pay, pay as you go is more, available. So plan on spending maybe $5 a month, maybe we'll see, um, after we've tested it out for 30 days and just see kind of how it really works out in real world usage. That's how you post it up. And that's how you can use railway to get your .NET application up. I do think it's a better option than Heroku. It seems to run quicker and it is going to be less expensive.